Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk about the top five pieces of exercise equipment that I think are useful to survivalists and preppers who want to get into shape for emergency preparedness scenarios. So let's get to it. I want to send a quick shout out to the Powerfilm company who currently has a Kickstarter campaign for the Lightsaver Max. It's a rollable, lightweight and thin film solar panel. I did a review on a smaller version of this a few months ago so you can go check out that review if you're interested. Now I've already done a general fitness tip video and I'm going to post that link right here so you can go check that out afterwards if you would like. This video is just about exercise gear. Now there's a lot of gimmicky exercise devices out there that you really don't need, especially for the specific purpose of preparing for emergency disaster scenarios in whatever shape or form they might come in. The following five pieces of kit are what I've found to personally be most pertinent and useful in my fitness journey. And of course, within this gear list, you're not gonna find things that you typically find in a gym like free weights and weight machines. Obviously, those things are very useful and definitely, without a doubt, Get a gym membership, it's a worthwhile investment for your mind and body. These five pieces of gear are gonna be things that are gonna supplement your activities inside or outside the gym. Now the first piece of kit is going to be a tracking system or an app that's gonna allow you to track your progress. It's gonna allow you to plot out your goals and it's gonna give you a sense of motivation to constantly see yourself breaking new plateaus. I think that FitNotes, since I've used it for the last three years, is one of the most user-friendly and practical applications for tracking your progress. It also provides you a detailed analysis to see where you're focusing, how close you are to reaching your goals, where you're plateauing, and where perhaps you can use improvement. I don't only use this app to track my fitness activities, I also use it to track sleep, my stress levels, my body weight, and numerous other lifestyle variables that can easily be cross-correlated with my fitness variables to see how they might be influencing the outcomes. All right, so number four is gonna be a bike. Not only is a bike one of the most efficient modes of human commuting, particularly in a disaster scenario where the roadways might be blocked and gasoline might not be available, it's also just gonna serve practical recreational purposes and indeed has a myriad of uses as a fitness tool. As you can see here, you can also get a child carrier to attach to the bike. Even if you don't have children, this is a great way to transport goods. Many of these trailers can in some cases manage carrying up to about 100 pounds of weight. Many of them are built lightweight and durable, like this chariot that is made by a company called Thule. I personally go with the 29 inch wheels because I find that they give me a higher top speed and I'm a speed kind of guy. If you're wanting something with greater maneuverability, then you could go with the standard 26 inch mountain bike tires. That's gonna give you better cornering and maneuverability. However, you're gonna feel the bumps probably a lot more, but that all depends on how good your suspension system is. Personally, I just go with a front end suspension system. I go with a Kona bike, it's a quality product. I go with their entry level Lava Dome model. I know that the frame is going to be reliable, it's going to last a lifetime, it's never going to warp, it's never going to bend, and it's made of quality materials that are going to stand the test of time. You can modify your bike in numerous ways. You can easily convert your smartphone into an onboard computer system, which will track your speed via GPS, which will keep track of the routes that you've taken, and all that good information, once again, to ensure that you are progressive overloading. And of course, you can always outfit your bike with Tactical to your heart's content. Now number three is going to be a good pair of running shoes. Now this might go without saying, but this is something you don't want to skimp out on because you can easily end up buying a new pair of shoes every other year if you don't do it properly. Now there's been one pair of shoes which I've put hundreds if not a thousand miles on. I'm talking in the gym, outside of the gym, running whether it's uh, through rain or shine. I'm talking parkour, off-road, on the trail. I've put these shoes through all sorts of abuse and they just still keep on ticking. And not only that, they look good, they don't smell bad. Due to its minimalist form factor, it's going to minimize the heel strike, which is going to allow you to strengthen the muscles in your foot more. It's better for your feet, it's better for your body, it's better for your back. You're going to be able to run farther, it's better for your knees, better for all your joints. I've worn many pairs of shoes that were made by companies like New Balance, Solomon, Reebok, all of those shoes lasted me 
one season, maybe a little bit of two seasons at best. These Merrill Men's Trail Glove Barefoot Runners are probably the best runners that I've ever worn in terms of durability and comfort as well. They take a little while to break in, but honestly, if you want something that's built to last, definitely go with this Merrill shoe. Number two is probably one of the best investments you can make, and that is a punching bag. If you don't have time to go and invest in the lethal Krav Maga training at the local Ass Kickery, then the least you can do is buy yourself a nice 70 to 100 pound punching bag to hang up in the garage or in the basement and just go to work every night and get used to hitting something that's hard. That's basically what you're doing here. By all means, if you can get some martial arts or mixed martial arts training, some self-defense training, then that's excellent. At the end of the day, one of the most efficient fighting styles for standing on two feet is going to be boxing or some variant thereof. In the very least, you can hit the bag. It's also a great way to manage stress. As you can see here, I'm by no means an expert at boxing. In fact, I got a lot of work to be done as I'm told. That said, it does condition the hand to make contact with something. Now, if you have a lot of money to spend, I'm talking like three to 500 bucks, you can buy yourself a bob punching bag. And basically this is a punching bag mannequin, which is gonna better simulate hitting the real thing. Number one is an item that I've been advocating for since this channel's inception, and that is a weighted vest. A lot of guys in the preparedness and survival community fantasize about how they're gonna carry around these tactical vests, which are just loaded down with ammunition and various types of survival gear, not counting their bug out bag and their firearm and their sidearm and all that other stuff that they're just gonna magically be able to carry for miles and miles on end. Now, a weighted vest is just a great option that's gonna get you accustomed to carrying large amounts of gear. It's also a great way to lose weight. If you wanted something that would better approximate carrying a backpack because the weight is gonna be distributed differently, then by all means, just get a backpack, fill it up with books. In my first couple year of training, this is exactly what I did. I filled up a backpack with 30 to 40 pounds worth of books and I would just walk around town, I would hit the trail. Now once again, these are just my top five most used items. These are not meant to replace free weight. Somebody's gonna come on here and say, oh, 100 pound dumbbells are the best. Well, of course you need dumbbells. I mean, above all else, all of that gym equipment, whether it's a chin up bar, bench press, a squat rack, all of those things are equally valuable here. The only reason why I didn't mention those is because those are all conventional things that everybody already knows about. So I hope I was able to bestow a bit of my fitness gear knowledge upon you today. If you have any questions about getting in shape for SHTF, by all means, drop me a line anytime. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you would be so kind and you would like to leave a donation, then by all means, go ahead, you can do so in the description. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.